simple to get a readme. Why to overcomplicate it? So we have this text box. Let me go to animations and if I would press fade, can I call this kinetic typography? Well, to some extent, but this would be too simple. In order to make this a bit more appealing, just a bit more interesting, at first, what I would think of, I would press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to duplicate this entire object and I would remove the top text here, I would press delete and I would remove the bottom text here. I will have now more control over the animation because I have this text separated. For the first lesson I would go for something simple. Let me take the first text and make it animate from left side and I will take the second text and animate it from the right side. For that I can use my not wipe not wheel, I want my fly in animation. You remember the fly in and this is where it comes very in handy because we have the effect options and we can set it to come from left. Alright, a bit of a boring animation, then you select the second one, we select again fly in, but this time fly in from right. I'll open up the animation pane and right now look at those animations, they are super boring. I want to select both, I want to right click and select start with previous, because I want to have complete control over those animations. I'll nudge it a bit to the left side because it's not centered. Ok, those animations I'll select with the shift key both, I definitely want them to take at least maybe 125. The second animation could be a bit delayed, let me preview what happens now. Ok, a bit slow, but we slowly get it to be a bit better. Now I want to double click on this animation, I want to go to its effects. I want a smooth start and or a bounce end. Now you can select if you want a smooth end or a bounce end. Let me select a smooth end first, maybe on the first text. Yeah, it beautifully smooths into the design, but on the second text I will select bounce, I will compare both animations and then I can decide which one I do like more. A small bounce for maybe half a second. Well, the bounce most likely will win, but let me preview that. Okay, the bounce comes in quicker, but it's a bit more appealing. The, the smooth ending would be better if there would be more, more text. But if we only have two words here, let me select the first one, let me double click on the effect and also select a bounce. Half a second of the bounce, boom, perfectly. I want to select both animations again because right now I believe they are not too slow, they are maybe too quick. Now I want to show you another trick. I'll press ALT 2 to select a rectangle and I'll place a rectangle here. Oh, I wanted a normal rectangle, but it doesn't matter. Shape outline, no outline. Shape fill, make it the fill of the background. This time white, Control C, Control V. You can barely see it, I can't even see it, boom. And we will not see the text unless it comes into the screen, not so close. Ok, look at that. Something completely unique, we wouldn't expect this from PowerPoint that we can cover up the left side and cover up the right side to make this text fly in starting from here. We will use this trick very often, now let me select a better color scheme for this entire design. Alright, the colors are a bit nicer, those boxes are still here and I delayed the first animation a bit and I make the second animation longer. That's it, this would be my finalized first kinetic typography animation. Something like this, very simple yet very effective and very good looking when it comes to PowerPoint animation. Oh and by the way, if you want a custom transition, let me Ctrl C and Ctrl V this, let me make this super big so it will be able to cover this kinetic text. I will select animation, I will select lines, and with the red dot I'll cover this up. This should happen maybe with previous but I need to delay it and I need to lower the duration. Now watch what happens. A beautiful transition covering up the entire text and we could for example add new text above it now. 